Star Wars Celebration this past weekend in London gave us a lot to think about, including the announcement of three new Star Wars movies coming to theaters in the next several years. Or will they? I think we all know the track record at this point of projects being announced by Kathleen Kennedy, Lucasfilm, and Disney when it comes to Star Wars, and it's not a very good track record. But is there something that makes it different this time that we need to consider at the very least to prepare ourselves for what is likely going to be a Ray movie coming forward. We've talked about that before with WDW Pro of that parkplace.com. And he's here again today with us to discuss an article recently published by Puck Magazine from Matthew Baloney and Kathleen Kennedy's apparent Star Wars amnesia. Here we go. Well, folks, welcome back. Another great day here at Valiant Renegade. It's good to see everybody out there once again. And if you are like one of the many folks watching this video, not yet subscribed to this channel, please take a moment, turn that little red subscribe button to gray, hit that notification bell, share this sucker out on the social medias. And of course, please do leave a comment below this video before you head out the door today. We want to hear your thoughts. And I have a feeling you're going to have quite a few of them. We are talking about the Star Wars news that was announced at Celebration this weekend. Uh, my good buddy here, WDW Pro from that parkplace.com. You know, we've been talking about this. We covered it on the Sunday Live show. Our good buddies over at Echo Base Network were doing yeoman's work streaming nine, ten hours a day on this Friday and Saturday. I thought it was a 24-hour deal. I, yeah, I, I, I they hope, even went off the air at all. I hope Coach and Nick got a lot of sleep. I called Coach today, and he was, yeah, man, I'm just, I'm chilling. I'm just, I'm like, yeah, I bet you are. <laughs> um, so anyway, but we had some announcements. Some announcements that pertained to some rumors, some information that you received from sources, uh, now right at about two months ago. Yeah, um, spot on. Spot on, uh, it was. You said that you had received some intel. By, by the way, Valiant, mm -hmm. I, I just want to say that it, I think it was our honor and pleasure to help the Star Wars fandom be able to stomach this by giving them that little appetizer that said, hey, here's what uh, here's what you got to deal with coming up real soon. So I'm, I'm glad that we help people go ahead and adjust to what, what we have to uh, now suffer through. Indeed, you did. And and in that vein, for those that may not be aware, it was Pro that first broke the news that, uh, sorry folks, but the Walt Disney Company is in fact looking at producing another Star Wars movie starring Ray Palpatine, bringing her back. And that is exactly the announcement that we got right out of the gate at Star Wars Celebration a few days ago. Not only an announcement but actually walked Daisy Ridley, Ray herself, out onto the stage. To, to middling applause. Yes, to middling applause to promote this. Um, and some people have questioned whether this movie is going to actually come to fruition. And I completely understand those questions. They have every right to be questioning it. We know the history at this point of uh, announcements uh, of regarding Lucasfilm and cinematic properties in particular that have, have gone off in the last few years, um, many of them seemingly hitting a brick wall. But I think as we go forward, there'll be a little bit more to this because there's another part of that information that you imparted, Pro, that is going to play heavily into what we're about to read. And that is from Matthew Baloney over at Puck. Um, and this is a source that we have routinely gone back to when they've got some, some news and articles that pertain to the conversations that we typically like to have here on Valiant Renegade and on that park place in WDW Pro's own YouTube channel. And here we go, Kathleen Kennedy's Star Wars amnesia. And this is specifically referring to the fact that Kathy seemed to allude to now that Kevin Feige project, one of those many that has been out there in the Star Wars ether for some time. Uh, well, that never, yeah, never a thing. It was never really a thing. Let's read this article. It's not too long, and then we're going to do some general comments here. From Matt Baloney, who is Kathy kidding? A lot of 
rolled eyes at Marvel this weekend after Lucasfilm president K.K. downplayed the recently shelved Star Wars project that was in development for Marvel's Kevin Feige. That and I project... say that's not the only reason that eyes were rolled around the world, but continue on. <laughs> you, you're not wrong, sir. You're not wrong. That project, according to Kennedy, was, quote, something announced in the press, or I guess the fandom? But there was, nah, there was nothing that ever got developed. It's not an abandoned project. It just didn't happen. Now, remember uh -huh. those words. Remember those words because Matt Baloney, who is somebody that is very much a Hollywood insider, uh, former editor of THR, uh, The Hollywood Reporter, um, and somebody that, that many would say is certainly of the Hollywood political mindset, so traditionally somebody that would be very much a fan of, of Kennedy's in terms of the type of productions, although Matt Baloney has been very stoic in his reporting over time with Kennedy's failures. I think he's been incredibly fair, which is why I really like citing his work many times because I think he does great stuff. Absolutely. What Baloney says here is that, A, the Kevin Feige Star Wars project was and still is very much real, and B, Kennedy was not only aware of that, that she actually received periodic updates on the status of that project, including when Marvel go-to Michael Waldron was hired to write it. In fact, far from being something announced in the press or the fandom, whatever that means, according to Baloney, uh, it was actually Alan Horn, Kennedy's boss, when he was running Disney's film group, who announced the project himself in 2019 with Horn saying, quote, with the close of the Skywalker saga, Kathy is pursuing a new era in storytelling. Horn told The Hollywood Reporter at the time. And again, that's back when Matt was still there. And in case you don't think he still has his contacts, there was an article in the past year or so from Puck Magazine when people were speculating would Alan Horn go over to Warner Brothers? Would Warner Brothers bring him in as some kind of advisor? Would Zaslav bring him in? Uh, Baloney started his article on that retort with, well, I picked up the phone and I called Alan on his cell and we went and got coffee. I'm not kidding. That's basically how the article started. So he's the man definitely has his connections. Okay. Uh, but continuing on, it made sense for these two extraordinary producers, Kevin Feige and, and uh, Kathy Kennedy, to work on a Star Wars film together. Doesn't if seem that, like she felt the same way. I, I have a feeling she didn't. And at the time, we even said, this seems Kathy had to hate this because that's her biggest rival at Disney, bar none, in terms of studio heads. There's six major studios at Disney now with the acquisition of Fox. Um, and, and Although that she was somehow certainly, managed to convince Kevin Feige to follow in her footsteps over at Marvel. It's, who who it, can understand it? Who knows? That's a conversation for another day for sure. But, you know, Feige, it goes on to say, Feige is by far and away the most powerful creative at Disney. His successes uh, in Kennedy's sandbox being Star Wars would be hugely embarrassing for her, especially given the fact that, you know, going back to all the problems that she had with J.J. Abrams' rush job on The Force Awakens, the mid-shoot firings of Phil Lord and Chris Miller on Solo, the pre-production firing of Colin Trevorrow on, on the rise of Palpatine, and all the filmmakers that have had to come develop at Lucasfilm with much fanfare and then departed after for a frustrating process. And Poor Patty. With, yeah, exactly. Well, he mentions Patty here. Let's get to the rest of this because this is where we want to kind of cut it and start talking as we get through these last two paragraphs. The comparison is actually pretty stark. Since Lucasfilm's 2019 release of The Rise of Palpatine, Feige's Marvel has made eight movies that grossed more than $6 billion worldwide. Now, of course, folks, we can, we can dive into the whole financial issues with some of those things. We have here many times on Valiant Renegade. Go check the videos on those, but be that as it may. Despite the pandemic ta uh, challenges and the same Disney Plus series commitments that Lucasfilm has, Indy 5 uh, is coming in June. Kennedy announced another round of projects at Star Wars Celebration, including... Daisy Ridley returning for the uh, Charmin Obadiah Chinoy, a directed project by Damon Lindelof and Justin Britt Gibson, but now... The name, the, the name that was difficult to pronounce, by the way, we can just substitute that for Crazy Lady. Continue on. Yeah, that, 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 that as well. 
but is now being written by Stephen Knight. Of course, now we know that Damon Lindelof has exited the project, and Stephen, uh, Stephen Knight of Peaky Blinders fame, one of my favorite shows, has taken over screenwriting duties on this project. Yet, there is still no Star Wars film ready for an official green light, and this is the key part of the article that people are, are raising eyebrows at. There is still no Star Wars film ready for an official green light, perhaps pushing the next installment into 26, 2026. Right. I, I agree with that, by the way. That's, that's the same thing I have heard. Yes, and, and, and I would too, and that's what I want to talk about. A you, and I, full... you and I, I believe, have said that live on the air before. That I, I mean, I have said live with you. I don't see how they can make 2025, flat out. Yeah, uh, a full seven years after the rise of Skywalker. For those keeping score, they announced projects from Patty Jenkins, Ryan Johnson. The Game of Thrones guys are all either scrapped or back burnered. Now it's Chinoy, James Mangold, who's made the new indie, Dave Filoni of The Mandalorian and Ahsoka series, plus Taika Waititi and Sean Levy. Let's see how many of those projects actually happen. And if they don't, how many of those projects will be selectively forgotten uh, to have been developed in the first place? So I, I see nothing wrong with this article. I like everything about it. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't see anything wrong on the surface. I'm totally with you. Now, what I want to discuss, though, is some people's reaction to this. And it's, it's been very, very broad. People looking at this as another, well, okay, everything, everything we heard this weekend is bogus. Um, and that that means that all of this was just, you know, Kennedy just throwing spaghetti against the wall to see what sticks. And this is going to be more problems for her. And to an extent, I would agree with that. And I think we even said over the weekend on Echo Base Network and on the Sunday show that I think the, the film project of the three mentioned – the one that maybe at this point has the least propensity for being completed would be the James Mangold project, but for the mere fact of the subject matter that it covers with this 25,000 year before the Skywalker saga, like the origins of the Jedi. There's nothing in Disney's wheelhouse right now in terms of actual investment, things on the ground, that, that ties into that. That's a movie they could potentially very easily let slip. The Mandoverse, obviously, is all that Star Wars is right now. So the Filoni project seems like oh, that oh. will... Now, wait a minute, Renegade. Lucasfilm thinks it's all about the High Republic. I mean, that, that's everything they want to shoot for right now. Everything's going that direction. That is. But that Filoni picture, I think, because, again, to remind people, that is the first thing that Kennedy talked about on the very first Disney Plus uh, Big Investor Day thing they did in December of 2020, which was... The promotional, you know, hour-long thing that they did for the whole Walt Disney Company, and the Lucasfilm segment was, you had Star Wars Visions, you had Ahsoka, uh, you had the Acolyte was brought up for the first time there, uh, you had Lando, which is yet to go anywhere, surprise, um, and and Kathy said during that that all of these events for the Mandalorian, of course, at the time you had Rangers of the New Republic, which we all know what happened with that, but all of these shows, Book of Boba Fett, and all this. They would culminate in a major climactic cinematic theatrical event is where she seemed to allude to. So that film, of course, was that's been on the planning board at least for the last two and a half years, it seems. Well, and I, th we, I think at one point it was bigger than a single film. I think that was supposed to go into a big trilogy, but that's okay. No, I, I, think, I think you're potentially correct, but be that it is, as it may. Let's look at the Ray picture, because that's the one people are picking on, and they're saying, well, there's no script yet, so it's not officially greenlit. I get all that, and of course, they just got rid of Damon Lindelof because he didn't bring a script to them, apparently, or an outline of a script, even, that was satisfactory to Disney. And let's be honest, at this point, it's Disney. It's Alan Horn and I'm sure Iger that are looking at this thing. They're not leaving this to Kathy anymore. And pro, on that note, why do we know that, especially about the Ray movie? What was the other part of the rumor that we discussed that made this different from everything, as far as I recall, that you and I have heard before, that anybody's heard before about any of these Star Wars projects? What was different about that rumor? Yeah, well, let's explainify this because there are plenty of people out there who are presenting this material in a way that sort of just confirms their biases. But that's really not what we want to do here. We want to explain it in a way that everybody understands and makes sense and is logical. And you can check it and see, oh, yeah, yeah I, I agree with him. Or no, I disagree with him. But here's the thing. 
as soon as Iger came back to Disney, right, as soon as Chapek was sent packing, Daisy Ridley suddenly showed up at Lucasfilm, and she was there for just a lunch and get a photo op with the uh, Yoda statue. Mm-hmm. Well, it turns out it wasn't just to come for lunch, and it turns out that it's not mere coincidence that the weeks after Iger comes back, that the legacy of Iger, that being Star Wars, begins to uh, go through some revisions to revive or revivify it. So he brings back the main character still living from that sequel trilogy, that sequel trilogy being the thing that Iger Greenland. What do we know about Iger? Well, he is a man of legacy. He greatly wants his legacy to be remembered and honored and loved. And therefore he wants Ray to be greatly remembered and loved. And he wants the galactic star cruiser, the uh, LARPing hotel over at Disney world. And he wants the galaxy's edge theme park expansions He wants all of that to be deeply loved because all of it is part of his legacy, but he can't revivify any of that if people keep hating on that darn sequel trilogy and those darn sequel trilogy characters. So for those who are thinking, well, this is just a, any ordinary movie, think again, this came from the top allegedly. And because of that, Kathleen Kennedy is not necessarily in charge. Now beyond the Ray movie, the other stuff, you know, we've watched Lucasfilm, we know they are as bumbling as bumbling can be, right? So, I mean, honestly, they they would they would cause Yukon Cornelius' stomach to churn. They don't bounce back, they just fall and lay there. But here's the deal. Yes, the Mandoverse movie probably will happen. Mm-hmm. The James Mangle movie? Well, that all depends on Indy 5. If Indy 5 underperforms, that thing's getting Patty Jenkins again, okay? Mm-hmm. We heard about the uh, Taika Waititi movie that's supposedly still out there. I don't think that'll ever happen, but I could be proven wrong. And now we know, apparently, that the Kevin Feige movie is still somehow in existence, somewhere out there in the ether. I don't know what'll ever happen with that, because Kevin Feige's putting out his own fires now, as his Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe collapses in on itself. But all of that said, of everything that was announced at Lucasfilm, and we will never tell you that Lucasfilm will complete something. We know that Lucasfilm can find a way. But of all the things that were announced, by far the best chance of coming to fruition on the big screen is the Ray movie. Yes. And outside of the Ray movie, we know that Ahsoka and the Acolyte and Young Jedi Adventures are the most likely in terms of Disney+. Plus. Yeah, and I mean, Ahsoka, obviously, the, the filming is completed. Uh, the post-production is largely completed. Uh, I mean, that was done around this time last year in terms of, well, at least when they started principal photography or were already into getting into principal photography. Um, the Acolyte started in late October, early November of last year. There's about a month from what we know of principal photography left, which is on schedule from everything that we've heard. Well, let me force become- your hand a little bit, Valiant. Yeah. Because I'm not... I- I probably won't have time to cover it this week on my channel, so let me see if I can get you to do it here right sure. now, folks. What, what do we learn about the acolyte behind the scenes in the last few days? It's it's kind of trivial, but it's kind of not. What did we find out about in some uh, some paperwork somewhere? Uh, specifically, I mean, starts with an E and ends with stention. <laughs> Yeah, the Acolyte, I mean, with their corporate filings for the uh, Blue Stockings uh, Limited, the UK entity, they did file for an extension uh, for their financial reporting, which if you look at the dates of when they were due and when the original financial reporting was set to go, and you see what they extended it to, you'll understand why, because it marries up perfectly almost with when they went into principal photography. So effectively, there was really not a whole lot to report between November 1st and December 31st of last year. So they've extended or they filed for an extension to kind of change the fiscal calendar on it because of the way they report. And it's not the first time that's happened. And I haven't even told Pro this yet. Um, Ghost Truck 6. Have you ever heard of that one, Pro? Ghost Truck 6. Sounds like a uh, sounds like a big wheel... I don't, I don't know. What, what do you got? That is that is the uh, production entity, so far as we know, for Ahsoka. Also oh, no, filed, I didn't know that. Also filed for an extension. That was the production entity. in the entity. world did they come up with that name? Ghost Truck uh, I, I don't know, but that, that, is, that, is, that is out there in the ether. Star Wars Monster Truck Racing. It's actually, look, I'll, I'll tell you how to do this, folks. It's very easy because we like to educate our audience. Um, we know that most of these corporate entities begin in, in California, and those California entities will then file 
if they're shooting in the UK, obviously, they will file for a United Kingdom corporate entity. There are websites that try to track when these things come out, and they're looking for certain names. So if you want to kind of find out what's going on, here's the, my best advice to you. You can look up UK entities out there. You can Google search these. Make sure you try to find the name Rhonda Hjort, uh, because that is Lucasfilm's top lawyer. And Rhonda Hjort, as an executive of Lucasfilm, will typically appear on all the corporate filings, both in the U.S. and the U.K., so you can go track all these things down. So that's how we know about you know the, the ones that they set up. In fact, they had one, and for, I, the name slipped my mind. They had set one up for, uh, I think, Rangers of the New Republic, and of course, got, it might have been Rogue Squadron. And that one, obviously, they, yep. they terminated that entity. You can go see it. It's like, well, they filed for termination on such and such a date, and it... It basically lined up with the Patty Which is what you would expect Scott. if they were yeah. going to cancel the exactly. Acolyte or if it were not real. But um, yeah. so, so essentially, these, these different properties of these, again, the Ray movie, very likely because we think it's coming from above Lucasfilm. We think it's part of Iger wanting to restore his legacy. And I'll say this, too. This is very interesting to me. If, if they're trying to make the 2025 deadline, that seems to me to line up with the idea that they would do some sort of uh, pre-production or production work that would put this thing into production at a time when Kathleen Kennedy either has just exited Lucasfilm or is preparing to do so, and therefore mm -hmm. would be very difficult for the next person to cancel it. So I, I think that's also interesting in, in terms of figuring out why I think that it's more likely than not to happen, even in spite of the fact that Lucasfilm, they are really good at snatching defeat out of the jaws of victory. Oh, indeed. Indeed. And, and, and look, with everything you heard announced uh, this weekend on Star Wars Celebration, probably in the next, you know, few months, you might be able to start finding a lot of these production companies or finding certain new names of production companies if you know how to look for them, like we just described, that are out there. But to me, it seems like with the Ray movie, um, as you correctly pointed out, this was an Iger initiative, and this is the difference. People keep asking, like, you know, you know, Valiant, did you change your tune, or Pro, did you change your tune, or why do people change their tune? As I've stated several times in the last few weeks to remind people, everything changed on November 20th or 21st, whatever it was, that night that Bob Chapek got fired, waiting to walk on stage with Elton John. Everything changed that night when Bob Iger came back. The script flipped. That's it. That's where we are. And if Iger is doing again what he did before with The Force Awakens way back when when they bought Lucasfilm 10 years ago, where he, he was personally involved in pushing that project in. He was personally overseeing it because that was a big deal to him. Part of that legacy word, Pro, that you just used a little while ago. He's doing it again now. You and I, Pro, have talked about this a number of times. That Bob Iger's legacy is the most important thing to him. He's back Otherwise, why would he be back? Exactly. He's got all the money in the world. That's exactly it. Why would he be back? And Star Wars is the one black eye. And even though we can all lament and say, oh, my God, are they really going to do this Ray movie? Yeah, they are. Because this is an Iger initiative, and he is looking, this is my opinion, he is looking to salvage what he built years ago with Star Wars. Yeah, I think to some degree, I think, you know, they know that, Something or something wasn't working with that, but they're going to try to push it through. In fact, Pro, it's probably similar to a video that you and I just recorded for your channel about That's not right. listening to marketing research. Well, and, and you and I are going to break do anyway. You and I are going to break some big news Thursday mm -hmm. and Sunday. Thursday five to seven on the Pro Show, yeah, and then uh, six to eight all, all these times Eastern on Renegade Online. We're going to break some big stuff because we've got somebody who is absolutely sick and tired of what is going on behind the scenes at Lucasfilm. And yeah. they've decided to tell us what's uh, what's happening. And we've got some specificity. We're going to be telling you even down to the name of the, uh, the, the, the strategy that Kathleen Kennedy has been using over there. So get ready for that. Yeah, indeed. And Pro, just to remind everybody with, with, with the stuff that you've been breaking on your channel and here on mine, um, I know you have a playlist on your YouTube channel. I believe since you've been on YouTube, um, you have you have a you have one hell of a track record right now. You want to tell folks about that? Tell them where to find you as we close well, out. All of the you know all of the uh, praise should go to the sources. They are the ones who stick their necks out time and time again. They're the ones who trust you and me to put this information out on the internet in a safe and responsible way to tell the truth, and then also to protect them. And so that's what we continue to do. 
But yes, from the very beginning of the channel, I set up a rumor playlist. And I did that for a reason I'll tell about in just a minute. But if you go look at the rumor playlist, just go to my channel and click on playlist. You'll find rumors. Rumors and leaks is what it's officially called. You will find that there are more than 50 videos currently since I started at the uh, first day of January. For the largest part of that, I've been doing two videos a day. And so more than 50 videos that cover these rumors, two of which are incorrect. The rest are not incorrect at all. They're spot on. Well, here's why I'm doing that. Just And I haven't told anybody this. But what I want to do is at the end of the year, and then every year from now on. So let's say that I do this YouTube thing for 50 years. Yes, Disney, be afraid. But if I, for however long I do it, at the end of every year, I want to make a big to-do about an audit. And I'm going to bring in somebody like Jonas or somebody uh, separate from myself to audit me using the rumor uh, playlist. And then we'll do a big video on it. We'll find out what did I get right? What did I get wrong? And uh, it's it's a way to hold my own feet to the fire. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Indeed, indeed. Well, Pro, I want to thank you for being here today. I want to thank everybody for watching. Make sure you subscribe to WDW Pro on YouTube as well as checking out thatparkplace.com. We do the best we can to bring you the information that we have. And we, you know, look, we're not always going to be right. Nobody is. We'll tell you, hey, we got this one wrong. That's okay. But That's you know humility, what? baby. It's humility. You got a heck of a track record. We're happy to have you here. And look, as far as this weekend goes, we told you the Ray movie was coming. It got announced. I told you that the Star Wars Acolyte panel was going to be a big part of it because they were only filming 40 miles away from where Star Wars Celebration was being hosted. They're filming at Shinfield Studios, just about, you know, like I said, 40 miles outside of London. And, um, that was a big part of the show Friday for Star Wars Celebration. I was on ABN when that happened. So look, you know, we at I least believe we stuff, said too that there would be nothing about Kathleen Kennedy retiring until after Indiana Jones at the earliest. And guess what? Yeah, she's still in the uh, she's still in the driver's seat, whether it's real or not. Yeah, she was she wasn't around too much. I mean, she did a couple of little small panels this weekend that I saw. Uh, I think she was out there for maybe about ten or fifteen minutes on Friday, and maybe ten or fifteen. Well, you know, minutes when people won't applaud morning. you, it's hard to stay out there. Yeah, she didn't get she didn't get much of an applause. They apparently gave that audience a little push Saturday morning when she walked That's back right. out because they were much louder that day. We don't care who it is that walks out on the stage. You will applaud or you will, will not give get you your plastic free toys. Luke Skywalker dolls if you applaud right. when she walks we out. We will take your Ray shampoo like from that. you. But otherwise, yeah, she was kind of non-existent at the. I mean, she probably had about as much face time at a Star Wars celebration this year as she has at the ones in the past. I would think. Mm -hmm. um, I gotta go. I would have to look, but I mean, it just. She, she's, she's there. Even, even at Star Wars Celebration, even with the people that were tepidly amused with a Ray movie coming, they didn't see they didn't seem terribly enamored with with Kathy walking out on stage. I wonder why. Um, so anyway, thank you folks for being here. Take care. Have a wonderful day. Drop a comment below this video before you head out the door. We love you. We'll see you on the Sunday live show.